episode 115, John Bonet Case, Last Christmas. Well, I'm saying it. I'm saying John Ramsey killed John Bonet, and he deliberately did it. He pre planned it, and this video is going to show it. And some of you might not agree that it was pre planned, but please keep in mind then he's still guilty if he did murder her. So, in this presentation, the case against John Ramsey, I'm going to in talk about the ransom note, the sailor's knot, the leaves in the styrofoam, and the unknown male DNA. This next part is from the cases that haunt us and instead of reading the whole thing I'm just going to summarize parts that I want to point out and if you want to read it you can pause the sergeant asked the Ramses for handwriting samples and John had quickly given him two tablets one had been lying on the kitchen countertop and contained Patsy's notes and the other on a table in the hallway not far from the spiral staircase and it contained John's writings and then here's the part that I feel is important in the middle of Patsy's notepad in black felt tip pen Mr. and Mrs. along with a single downstroke that could easily have been the beginning of a capital R this is the part about the practice ransom note this here on the screen is testimony from the deposition in the Chris Wolf lawsuit against the Ramses and here's the important part to me when John Ramsey was asked if there was anything special about the ransom note he replied we were addressed as Mr. and Mrs. Ramsey what the ransom note says mr ramsey it doesn't say mr and mrs ramsey how can john ramsey make that mistake if he didn't write the note if he didn't write the ransom why would he say that it was addressed to mr and mrs ramsey i think he made a boo-boo Next, I want to explain my position on the ransom note. I feel like John Ramsey wrote it. And how is that possible? Because he wrote it on a computer first and then copied it down. That's one of the reasons it's so long. He didn't realize it'd be that long. But that's how he disguised his handwriting because he copied the font. So let me explain what I think happened. If you look at the left, that is not the exact font that I think he used, but it's similar. And one of the problems is when Ramsey wrote this ransom note, it kind of has like three stages of handwriting. It's first kind of sloppy and he makes some misspellings in there. And then he starts kind of like writing in more a normal pattern. And then at the end, I think he really moves to closer to his handwriting at the very end. So let me show you a few of the letters that match up. And there's a few letters that don't match up. It's because I used the wrong font. So if you take a look at the capital M, the capital R, the capital L, the capital W, and the capital S and the capital A, they look similar to the ransom note. And then if you look at the small A's, the F's, the W's, they are similar. And now taking a look at the last page, you can see that the author is writing, I don't know if the word's neater, but it's not as sloppy as it was on the first page. It's not shaky and that kind of thing. It's pretty standard. 
and if you compare the left hand side with the right hand side the letters match now I know not all the letters match up so I put this another example here and I just want to point out certain letters I didn't have time to get the exact font that matches the ransom letter it, it's very difficult to obtain or, or find but if you look at the T's on the left hand side and compare that to the ransom note you can see they're in the same style and there's other letters that match up but most of the letters don't match because this isn't the correct font you can see that the victory SPTC is similar also now I don't have the same font so that's why there's differences but what I believe happened was he typed the ransom on his laptop computer and then he copied the screen onto the notepad and made the ransom note that way John Ramsey only spoke to the police a limited amount of time during his police testimony the, on the left is the ransom note and on the right is a transcript of John's testimony and you can see that the terminology in the ransom note 99% chance 100% chance and John Ramsey's testimony 99.9% .9 chance 98% chance his terminology is the same here stray dog in the ransom note and then John Ramsey's testimony stray dogs that Patsy brought to the house this is not a coincidence next I want to point out the knot and the garrot and some people believe believe it or not that John Ramsey didn't know how to tie a knot he even kind of suggested that in some of his uh, police testimony but he went to officers training in the Navy and served for two and a half years and you can see on the garrote there that knot tied to the paintbrush handle it's clear it's not a simple knot it's not just tied on there like if I tied that on there it would I wouldn't have done it like that it's tied on there so that it won't slide back and forth along the paintbrush and that's because that's a method tying it like that a method so it won't slide and the reason that John knew about this is from sailing he sailed he was a yachtsman and he knows how to tie these knots in lines here's a transcript of his police testimony we could have put the sail back up we could have thrown out an anchor we could have tied to get the line undone tried but fleet just immediately started screaming for help now was just there trying to keep the boat from pointing in the wind and then the Coast Guard came and then it talks about lines and lines keep in mind that John Bonet's body wasn't to be found in the basement Patsy called 911 and John didn't want that to happen the plan was for her to be found on the side of the road or someplace and this was to be attached to her neck and it goes along with the ransom note of a foreign faction and this is a garrote that killed John Bonet the plan was messed up because Patsy called 911 that morning and she didn't follow the instructions of the ransom note see in this photograph the packing peanuts and the leaves well a small amount was found by John Bonet's body in the wine cellar so how did they get from this window well to the wine cellar well I believe John Ramsey put John Bonet's body up in the window well because he was going to move her body 
first he hit her there but he moved he was going to move her body to his car in the morning now how do I know this is true two reasons first the grating was not moved there were no footprints out there by the grating and there was a spider web on the grating they know the grating wasn't moved and then two John Ramsey broke the window in the summertime to get in. And after that happened, the housekeeper cleaned up all the glass off the floor. The gla there was glass found on the suitcase and on the floor. So how did that happen? Well, that's when John Bonet's body was moved from the window well to the basement cellar, the wine cellar. And finally, the DNA, trace and touch DNA, the unknown male DNA found at the crime scene or on John Bonet's body and fibers that were found. Well, I feel that John Ramsey used gloves when he staged the crime scene. And that's where the male the unknown male DNA might have transferred to her clothes. Again, this is minor contributors of DNA, most likely skin cells, shedded skin cells. In my last point, there were fibers believed to be from John Ramsey's collared black wool shirt that were found in John Bonet's underpants. Well, that ends this episode of Unsolved. And on the next episode, we're going to take a look at the Zodiac Killers. So I'll see you tomorrow.